When we feel safe amongst our own, the natural reaction is trust and cooperation. When we do not feel safe amongst our own, the natural reaction is cynicism, paranoia, and self-interest. So the question is, how do you create a circle of safety? As it turns out, the human body is built the exact same way as any organization. If we want to direct the behavior of people inside our organization, what do we do? We develop all sorts of incentive systems. We give them a target, we give them a goal, we offer some sort of bonus. And what do people do? They work towards the goals that we set. We direct their behavior. It works perfectly effectively. It works the same way with children. We give them gold stars and we get them to do the things that we want. It works perfectly fine. Inside the human body are certain incentives that work exactly the same way. And if you've ever had a feeling of pride, status, accomplishment, love, trust, friendship, loyalty, all of these feelings that I'll generically call happiness are basically produced by four chemicals inside our bodies. They are endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. And so, every single feeling that we basically know as happiness is controlled by these four chemicals. And what they're trying to do is incentivize us to get us to repeat behaviors that are in our, that are in our best interest. In other words, to get us to cooperate, to get us to trust. It is our natural disposition to want to trust and cooperate, and we're always looking for it, which is why the sense of belonging is so powerful. We're always seeking out people who are like us. We want to be next to people who are like us. The first chemical, endorphins. We've all heard of an endorphin rush, a runner's high. Endorphins have one purpose and one purpose only, to mask physical pain. That's it. In our modern day and age with supermarkets and cars, we don't really use endorphins for survival much anymore. But there are other ways you can get endorphins. Laughing, for example, when we laugh, it's actually an endorphin rush. You're actually convulsing your internal organs. And so endorphins are released to mask that pain. We've all had the experience where we laugh so hard, we say, stop, stop, it hurts. It's because the endorphins have run out. Dopamine. Dopamine is the feeling you get when you find something you're looking for or you accomplish a goal you set out to accomplish. You know that remarkable feeling you get when you cross something off your to-do list? Oh, that's dopamine. This is why we are told that you must write down your goals if you want to achieve them. If you don't write down your goals, you, you won't achieve your goals. There's some truth to this. We're very visual animals. You have to be able to see the target. And then it directs, the dopamine directs us to stay focused on that target. The whole idea of metrics is to count progress, to make us feel like we're making progress towards the goal. We're not supposed to be obsessed with the metrics. We're supposed to be obsessed with the destination. Metrics is silly, uh, simply a way to help us feel like we're getting towards it. This is why we have a vision statement. They call it a vision statement because you have to be able to see it so that it focuses us towards that vision. The problem is most vision statements are absolutely useless. It's because they're abstract and we can't imagine them in our mind's eye. We can't see them, you know? So many vision statements are to be the biggest, to be the best, to be the fastest, to be the most respected. Respected by whom? Your mother? We can't understand this. What if I were to tell you, you'll get a bonus if you accomplish more? How much more, you ask me? More. Doesn't work. We're no good with the abstract. We need things to be specific. We need, to be them, we need, we need them to be visual. My Most of the incentive systems that we have built inside our companies are dopamine incentive systems. They're individual incentives. We give people a target and we offer them a bonus. And we offer them, that is the primary means we drive behavior. And so what happens is people will do exactly what we want and they will work for the dopamine and they'll hit the first target and then we'll give them another bonus and we'll hit the second target and you can become addicted. You can actually become addicted to performance. You can actually become addicted to making the numbers inside a company. And the problem is like all addiction in time, you actually waste resources, waste time and destroy relationships. Ironically, it is not the best way to get a company to grow. And the reason is, is because dopamine and endorphins are selfish chemicals. You don't need anyone's help to get them. Go for a run, work your to-do list, get your goals set, you're good to go, you don't need anyone's help, you can do it by yourself. The problem is the feelings don't last. They're very short term. You lose them quickly. As soon as you achieve something, nobody here is excited about the numbers they hit four years ago. It's gone. It's on to the next. And this is the problem. This is the problem. 
we actually work against each other. Too much dopamine in the system, we actually become more selfish, not more selfless. And as we know from the circle of safety, as we know, our best opportunities are to work together to face the dangers outside and seize the opportunities, not to work by ourselves. This is why the other two chemicals exist. Serotonin and oxytocin are the selfless chemicals. They are the social chemicals. They are the chemicals responsible for trust and loyalty and cooperation. Without these chemicals, we'd all be working by ourselves and we would not do very well. We're not very good by ourselves. <clears throat> the first one, serotonin, is the leadership chemical. It's the feeling of pride. It's the feeling of status. It's the feeling leaders have. This is why they walk like this. Right? It's responsible for self-confidence as well. Right? If you think about there are ways to get serotonin, one of the ways to get serotonin is public recognition. This is why events are very important. Public events, company events are very, very important. Right? It's because when we put a room of our peers together and we single somebody out, we just like to single out Peter. Peter, can you stand up, please? Great job on the meeting today. We just want to say thank you. You did a superb job. Peter feels good. He feels his status rise. He feels valuable. You know, we all want to feel valuable amongst our own tribe. We all want to feel that our work is valued by our peers and our bosses. And so when we have it pointed out publicly amongst the group, it actually makes us feel good and valuable, and others see us as valuable, and we feel our status rise, we feel proud, and it builds our confidence. Serotonin works best when it's shared. What it's attempting to do is reinforce the relationship between parent and child, coach and player, boss and employee, leader and follower. It's attempting to reinforce the relationship between the person who sacrifices so that you may gain and the person who's the recipient of your sacrifice. And we like to work hard because we want to make those who sacrificed for us, we want to make them proud. We want them to feel that their sacrifice was worth it. That's why when we give an award to somebody, the first person they thank is God, their parents, their boss, their coach, whoever sacrificed so they could achieve something on this great day, it's the first person they thank. I couldn't have done it without their support, their love, their sacrifice. And if we give it to the boss or the coach, and we give them an award, they stand up there and what's the first person, who's the first person they thank? Couldn't have done it without my team, they say. And the team sits there and goes, we love you. <laughs> and it's shared. And what we do is we work hard for each other. The person who's responsible and in, the, in charge is reinforced to continue to give and see that, that they will achieve something great and we continue to work hard to make them proud and prove to them that their sacrifice was worth it. We don't want to let people down. We're not accountable to numbers. We're accountable to people. We're constantly assessing and judging each other. Who's alpha? Who's beta? Who's dominant to us? It's not a fixed standard. It's a relative standard. If you've ever met someone and you're nervous meeting them, you're not the alpha. We've all had the experience where someone's met us and we can sense that they're nervous meeting us. You're the alpha, right? We're constantly judging and assessing each other. We're hierarchical animals. You can't put a group of people in a room and say, you guys are all equals. It doesn't work that way. We always self-organize. And the reason is because when we assess that someone is alpha to us, we voluntarily take a step back and allow them to eat first. Our leaders get first choice of meat and first choice of mate. We may not get the best choice of meat, but we get to eat eventually, and we don't get an elbow in the face. Good system. To this day, we are perfectly comfortable with somebody more senior than us getting preferential treatment. Not a single person in this room has a problem with somebody more senior than you making more money than you doesn't bother us at all. We might think they're an idiot, but it doesn't actually bother us that they make more money. Nobody has a problem with somebody more senior having a better parking space or a bigger office. It doesn't bother us. In fact, we sometimes expect it. It's because we're proud to do things and show uh, deference to those more alpha than us, those that we have judged as alpha. And if you're the recipient of that deference, if you're the one called sir or ma'am, if you're the one who gets given a cup of tea as soon as you walk into the room even though you didn't ask for it, if somebody holds the door for you or carries your luggage for you, or you're the one making more money and enjoying all the perks, you feel the love, you feel valued by your tribe, you feel the serotonin, you feel your confidence rise, and it feels good. This is why we're all trying to vie to raise our status in the society, because it feels good. It comes with certain perks. It's good to be the king. And you should enjoy those perks. However, they don't come for free. 
There's a cost to being the leader, you see. As a Marine Corps general told me, the cost of leadership is self-interest. And he's right. You see, the group is not stupid. Yes, we gave our alpha this preferential treatment. Yes, we gave them first choice of meat. Yes, we gave them first choice of mate. Yes, we show them all this deference, and they get all that confidence as a result of all the serotonin. And the reason is because when danger threatens the tribe, we expect the person who's actually stronger, who's actually better fed, and who's actually filled with all that additional confidence to rush towards the danger to protect us. That's the cost of leadership. That's why we gave them first choice of mate, because they might die first, and we want to keep their genes in the gene pool. We're not stupid. That's what leaders do. They're willing to take the risk and sacrifice their perks or comfort when it matters to protect their people. You should enjoy all the perks you've earned them. However, are you willing to sacrifice the numbers to save the people or would you sacrifice the people to save the numbers? Only one of those choices makes you a leader. Oxytocin. Oxytocin is everyone's favorite chemical. It's the feeling of love, it's the feeling of trust, it's the feeling of loyalty, it's all the warm and fuzzies, unicorns and rainbows. Like I said, multiple ways to get moxy oxytocin. One way, physical contact, right? This is why children hold on to us, makes them feel safe. It's why we hug the people we love, because it feels good. It's why athletes high five, it's why when someone's hurt or someone's depressed, we touch them, we kiss them on the forehead, we rub their leg and say, there, there, don't worry, it'll be okay. We put, we put our hands on our friend's shoulders and we sense that they're tense because oxytocin relaxes us and it makes us feel safe and it makes us feel that someone's there for us. And it gives us the confidence to try again because we know someone's there. You think business is about terms and contracts, it's not. It's about our pursuit to find circles of safety. Business is looking for human relationships to find people around whom we can feel safe. And this is one of the most valuable tools you have. Imagine you're about to sign a deal with someone and you come to sign the contract. And they say, we're so excited. And you say, we're so excited. And you say, great. And they say, no, no, we don't need, I don't need to shake your hand. Let's just get this contract signed and start the deal. And you go, great. And they say, no, 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 I don't need to shake your hand. Let's just do this. I agree to all the terms. You just got all the terms you asked for, and yet their simple refusal to shake your hand, to create the human bond of trust, means one of two things will happen. You will either scuttle the deal, or you will go into it nervous. Because they wouldn't shake your hand. Oxytocin, trust, safety. If someone does a good job, or you want to criticize somebody, instead of doing it over email, stand up, walk across the hallway, knock on the door and say, nice job today. And if you can't do that, pick up the telephone. Pick up the phone and say, hey, just wanted to say nice job. And they'll say, is that the only reason you called? And you go, uh-huh. And they go, wow, I've done it. Watch it happen. People are amazed that you would spend the time simply to say thank you. Or if there is a criticism, that you would spend the time to pay them the, the service to do it yourself, as opposed to on some email. Leadership is a sacrifice. Sometimes that sacrifice comes in terms of your comforts, your profits. Sometimes that sacrifice comes in terms of your time and your energy. And the best leaders are the ones who are willing to sacrifice for their people. Leadership is a choice. It is not a rank. I know many people at the top of organizations who are not leaders. And I know many people at the bottom of organizations who absolutely are leaders. And when you're willing to do that, and your people feel confident that you would do that, you are rewarded with their love and their loyalty, and they will gladly give you their blood and their sweat and their tears and sacrifice themselves to see that your vision is advanced. And the more oxytocin we have in our systems, the more good we want to do. It actually makes us more generous. And as I said before, it, it boosts our immune system, it makes us happier, it makes us healthier. Why? Because the human body is desperately trying to get us to look after each other. The greatest feeling we can get is when we do something nice for each other on purpose, so that we will do nice things for each other. And if we see people do nice things for each other, it makes us want to do nice things for each other. Why? Because the human body is trying to get us to look after us, ourselves. Happy people live longer. Happy people, oxytocin also does something to the frontal lobe. It makes you a better problem solver. It makes you smarter when you work amongst people with whom you trust.